This video includes a paid sponsorship from NordVPN, but I'll talk more about that later. The Monroe team is in the process of tearing down a Tesla Cybertruck, and they recently posted on X.com these images showing an internal look at the Cybertruck battery pack. In this video, I'm going to discuss what these images reveal about the Tesla Cybertruck's structural battery pack design. And I'm going to compare that to the Tesla Model Y and what Tesla unveiled back in 2019 at their battery day. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Back in 2019 at Tesla's battery day, they unveiled not only the 4680 battery cell itself, but also the structural battery pack design. Notice in this image that Tesla used during their battery day presentation, how the structural battery pack design has no internal structural components, but it looks like Tesla initially intended for the battery cells themselves to take much of the vertical structural load. However, when you look at these internal images of the Tesla structural battery pack that were shared on x.com by Monroe Live, you can distinctly see that there are structural supports separating four separate battery sections. These structural supports are pretty significant, and I will discuss this more later, but you can tell here that the batteries themselves are actually much lower than the structural supports themselves, so it doesn't appear like the battery cells are really taking any of the vertical structural load of the battery pack. I'll talk more about these structural supports later on in the video, but suffice it to say that if Tesla were able to um, actually have the battery cells themselves take the vertical structural load, instead of needing these vertical supports, it would have allowed Tesla to have at least one, but likely two more rows of 4680 battery cells in this battery pack. So while this is apparently necessary for the Tesla Cybertruck to have the kind of payload and towing capacity that Tesla uh, was targeting, I wish it wasn't there because it would actually mean that the Tesla Cybertruck had a larger battery pack. When you compare the Tesla Cybertruck's structural battery pack design to the Tesla Model Y that Tesla previously manufactured with 4680 batteries and a structural battery pack, in the Cybertruck, the structural separators in that battery pack are much more substantial than what we saw in the Model Y structural battery pack, which had, instead of these bigger, thicker supports in between the cell sections, the uh, Model Y had much thinner fiberboard supports in between each section of the batteries. However, I recently learned based on a conversation that I had with Tom Pruche, who is the director of electrification at Monroe and Associates, that it appears like even with the Model Y, that the battery cells themselves in that battery pack, in that structural Model Y battery pack, the battery cells themselves did not end up taking really any of the vertical load based on what can be seen in the structural battery pack design. I do want to play a clip of a call that I recently had with Tom talking about this topic, but before I do that, this portion of today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. You may not know it, but your online activity is constantly being tracked by many of the websites that you visit and your location is not private. However, when you connect to the internet through NordVPN, your location is masked and your data is encrypted so you can avoid being tracked whether you're at home or connected to a public Wi-Fi connection. All VPN services are not created equal and can slow down your connection speeds. However, NordVPN is nearly twice as fast as the next VPN provider, so you can safely browse without sacrificing speed. And since they have 5,900 plus servers in 60 countries, you can experience a fast VPN experience pretty much wherever you are in the world. And they allow you to connect up to six devices at one time. Check out everything that NordVPN has to offer by going over to nordvpn.com forward slash cleanerwatt. And if you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months free and a huge discount. And also don't worry, it's risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Going back to the Model Y structural battery pack design, once again, it appears like the battery cells even in that design were not taking any of the vertical load. Here is a clip of Tom, who once again is the director of electrification at Monroe and Associates, talking with me about the Model Y structural battery pack. First and foremost, the 4680 cell, right? The structural foam was actually underneath it, all right? So that is the polyurethane material. 
And then if you look down in the trough where the batteries themselves sit, you can see that there's mica that the cell sits on. And then there's the little plastic trough that is the vent trough to carry the gases away, right? So what the point there is, is that that's all very soft and compressible. And then if you look at over here, this substrate that sits up on top, this has got a lot of compressible materials on it as well. So none of that seems very logical to be a place where you would put stresses in the downward direction on the pack. But what you can see if you look close is these fiber boards. You can see there's a little uh, QR cord on the side of that. It actually looks like wood. It's got a granular structure like wood. It is fibrous in its content, but we determined that it was an extruded sort of fiber material. But you can see it sits proud of the rest of the pack and it goes all the way down to the bottom of the pack. So it appears to be the mechanism that takes the vertical forces um, from whatever might be above. And we know what's above. There's seats, uh, center console, carpeting, and you know, none of that even attempts to address what the stresses and loads might be in a collision or say a rollover situation where they would have to protect for everything. So uh, again, this, uh, this is setting up proud of the rest of the structure. So it kind of implies that it is a, uh, a structural member in my view. So never mind these pieces of wood, we added those just so you could put a plexiglass cover over this thing. Um, but uh, the actual wood itself, maybe this would give you a little better view. I'm really struggling for why it's, the focus is so finicky, but here we go. So here you can see that wood piece pretty nicely. And uh, it is definitely a, a, an outstanding feature. And again, in my personal um, assessment of this, it is a more likely member to take the stress than the cells themselves. Another thing about the cells that kind of leads you towards that is if you look at the cell here, here's one that's been extracted from the unit. You can see the little laser welded tab on the top, the current collector for the positive terminal. But these little discs, they're you know a little smaller than the shape of a dime. They fall off really easy. Um, in fact, during our extraction process, we lost quite a few of those. So any sort of stresses that were coming into the top of the cell there would exacerbate the already frail nature of the way this is attached to the cell. So it seems logical that you wouldn't try to put forces through here. If you were going to put them anywhere, you put them on the perimeter of the cell. And that is a pretty robust piece there, except there's nothing there in the pack design to allow you to put forces around the cell. There's nothing in there. I mean, it's, it sits down below. So uh, again, the only thing that's up high are those little positive um, disks and those things um, Again, they're very frail. If you were to subject those to vertical forces, they'd pop off. Okay, now I want to go back to the images that Monroe Live shared on x.com of the Cybertruck's structural battery pack. First of all, you can see here that the internal foam in the battery pack around the battery cells themselves is a teal color instead of a pink color. I don't yet know if this means that it's a different material or if it's just a different color, and it may not be significant at all, but I thought I'd point that out first of all. In addition, it's important to note here that what we're looking at here in these images is the underside of the Tesla Cybertruck structural battery pack, the side of the structural battery pack that would have been closest to the road. In the previous Monroe Live YouTube videos showing the teardown of the Model Y structural battery pack, those videos were shown coming from the top of the battery pack down where this battery pack has been flipped. Now, when you look at a close-up image here, you can see that there is a pretty large gap between the height of the battery cells and the center structural supports. There's so much room there that I responded to this on x.com by writing, quote, is there enough available height to have a double stack of battery cells? This is also something that Limiting Factor posted on x.com, quote, I wonder if this was originally designed to accommodate two layers of battery cells. However, just in these images, it is kind of difficult to tell how much room there actually is there. And in addition, based on how the structural battery pack design of the Model Y was designed, 
there was actually um, a plastic section and a mica section underneath the battery cells themselves. And so I don't know how much room that takes up in the Tesla Cybertruck. For example, here is a clip of Corey Steuben, who used to be with Monroe & Associates, explaining what the Model Y had underneath the battery cells in the structural battery pack design. And if you get in here, Eric, you can see that there is an ABS base uh, underneath the cells, and then there's a thin layer of mica. So I'm gonna point at the mica. You can see this right here, a thin layer of mica, and then a, a, that black part is the ABS base. Um, so the, the vents are on the bottom side of the cell, so if you have an overcharging scenario or something going wrong, it's gonna vent downward. So in these Cybertruck battery pack images shared by Monroe Live, the bottom plastic apparently has been removed, and this was pointed out by engineer Antonio D., who also formerly worked at Monroe and Associates. And if you were to add those plastic pieces back in, that would explain some of the height gap here. But once again, there might have been enough room designed here for a double layer of battery cells. And maybe that's how Tesla initially designed the Cybertruck battery pack to be so they could achieve 500 plus miles. But then they decided to go with a smaller battery pack and keep the range a little lower. Because I believe Tesla's initial intent was for the battery cells themselves to take a lot of the structural load of the battery pack, the vertical structural load, their first generation of 4680 battery cells had a decently thick exterior battery can. Whereas I believe the second generation of Tesla's 4680 battery cells, the cyber cells, have a decently thinner exterior can. We'll find more out about that once we actually see a teardown of the battery cell itself, but I expect that the battery can itself will be thinner because Tesla realized that they weren't going to use these battery cells to actually carry the vertical load. So when they designed the generation two 4680 battery cell, I believe they saved some weight by making that thinner. One of the reasons why the Tesla Cybertruck's middle structural supports in that battery pack are so significant comes down to the fact that the Cybertruck has to be able to carry a payload of up to 2,500 pounds and tow up to 11,000 pounds. As I mentioned previously in the video, if Tesla did not have these center support structures in the pack, you would be able to add in at least one, but likely two more rows of 4680 battery cells, which would increase the battery pack size and lead to more range, and would also increase the pack level energy density of the battery pack, which is what really matters at the end, which right now is still slightly less than the 2170 and 18650 equipped Tesla vehicles. In this chart, you can see the pack level energy density numbers for each one of these Tesla vehicles. And the first four there are from EPA documents. And for the Model Y with a structural battery pack, that pack level energy density is an estimate based on the best available data that I have. But nonetheless, you can see that according to EPA documents, the Tesla Cybertruck's pack level energy density of 170 watt hours per kilogram is a little bit less than the Model 3 and the Model Y and a decent amount less than the Tesla Model S. However, even though Tesla's second generation of 4680 battery cells, their cyber cells, are 10% more energy dense than their first generation 4680 battery cells, these battery cells are still a little bit less energy dense than the 2170 battery cells and their 18650 battery cells. Because of this, when you actually look at an apples to apples comparison here with space efficiency of the battery packs, the Cybertruck pack level energy density is 66.4% as energy dense as just the cells are themselves, which looks to be slightly more efficient than the Model 3 battery pack and almost as efficient as the Model Y and Model S battery packs. Nonetheless, it is encouraging that the packing efficiency here of the Tesla Cybertruck structural battery pack is pretty much on par with the rest of Tesla's vehicles. With that being said, just because these structural supports are necessary and it doesn't appear to be exactly what Tesla envisioned back in 2019 with this structural battery pack design, it doesn't mean that it's a bad design. And Tesla's ability to install the carpet and the seats and those assemblies on top of the battery pack themselves and then to bolt that up into the frame of the Cybertruck, that's still very efficient and still a great design. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.